Hey everyone, Two Pad Stack from the future here. Uh, my internet went out shortly after filming this video. Uh, it was out for about 36 hours, so I didn't even bother filming the second one. I'm going to film the second video right after this for part three of the draft. Uh, I filmed this yesterday, so there's a lot of news in here that hasn't that I don't cover. I'm going to cover all the rest of that in the next video, and I will see you then. How's it going, everyone? It's Two Pad Stack here, and we are going to continue the review of the draft. We're going to do the picks 11 to 20 and go through a little bit of news that happened this morning, especially some trades involving uh, Matt Murray and Nick Benino. At number 11, the Nashville Predators selected Yaroslav Askarov, which was a little bit interesting because I really didn't think that Nashville was going to be the team to take him. Uh, UC Soros looks like he's going to be the guy their next big starting goalie. So if Askarov is as good as everyone says he is, and if he is the next Vasilevsky, where does that put Soros? Is Soros going to get traded? Uh, it's going to be in a few years, but it's just going to be interesting what happens with Soros and Askarov. At number 12, the Florida Panthers selected Anton Lundell, who played in Liga. He is a two-way uh, center, so he is he has the the defensive capabilities that a lot of other forwards in his draft don't. Uh, he isn't the flashiest player, but he is a player who can get the job done. Uh, they were comparing him a lot to Barkov, um, so having him on the same team as Barkov it would be a good idea. Um, I think this is a good pick for Florida. They need some more depth, especially up front. Uh, and hopefully Lundell can come in either this year or next year and put some work in. At number 13, the Carolina Hurricanes selected Seth Jarvis. He is a right winger from the WHL. He had 98 points this year in 58 games, so he is pretty good. Um, I think that this was a very good pickup for Carolina. I think if there's anywhere... The only two things that Carolina really needs to improve on, I think they need better goaltending. Um, so if Frederick Anders gets traded to them, I think that'd be a very good idea. Uh, but I think that while they do have a very good forward group, I think they could use some more depth in their bottom six. And if Seth Jarvis could step into a bottom six role, either sometime this season or at the beginning of next season, I think that'll be a very good thing for Carolina. And they could eventually be one of the better teams in the league. At number 14, the Edmonton Oilers selected Dylan Holloway. Uh, what's interesting about Dylan Holloway is that even though he's a Canadian player, he was playing in the NCAA, and he already has a year in the NCAA, so he is an overager. So that is my only really concern about him. He's a He can play center or he can play left wing. I would assume that with McDavid, Dreisaitl, and Newton Hopkins down the middle, it's very unlikely that Holloway actually plays center. I think he will be a winger for them, but I think that this is a good pickup for the Oilers. The Oilers desperately, desperately need wingers, and drafting a guy who can come in and play the wing that probably next year, uh, I think that that will be very good for the Oilers. At number 15, the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, selected Rodion Amirov. Uh, that surprised a lot of people, including me. Uh, on a lot of draft boards, I think even elite prospects had him being a very late first-round pick, and some, I'm sure, didn't even have him in the first round. So I'm kind of surprised that Toronto would pick him uh, at 15, but maybe Kyle Dubas and the scouting staff there thought, saw something that the other scouts didn't. Uh, he could be, you know, sometimes you go off the board a little bit, and you can get a huge steal, and you look like a genius, or he flops, and you look dumb. So it's going to be interesting to see how well this is. But he has played 31 games in the KHL, only seven points. But, you know, he is still, uh, I think he's eight, he's either 18 or 19. So it's not like he's very, it's not like he doesn't have any room to grow. At number 16, the Montreal Canadiens selected defenseman Caden Gooley. Uh, Gooley's a very interesting, uh, pick. I think that this is a great pickup for Montreal. They do need defense, but I think that the, yeah, I think they should have drafted a forward. I know that there's a forward, that this is a very forward heavy draft, but Montreal's, Montreal's tough. They need a, they need better forwards. They need better defense. 
and they need a backup goalie, which they have now with Jake Allen. But they need a better overall team. And I'm not sure if Kate, I think their forward problems are a little bit worse than their defensive issues. So I, I don't know if Caden Gooley was the right pickup for them, but I do think that Caden Gooley is going to be a good defenseman for them as long as they keep him. And I think that Montreal can, this pick can work in their favor, but it's going to be interesting. At number 17, the Chicago Blackhawks selected Lucas Reichel. He played in the DEL. He is the second German player to be drafted this year. Uh, John Jason Paterka, he was supposed to be the third, and everyone I saw had him in the first round, but he, I think he got drafted by Buffalo this morning, so I was surprised that, uh, only two Germans went in the first round, but Lucas Reichel does help Chicago. Chicago desperately, desperately needs forwards, especially Kane and Taze aren't getting any younger. They need guys to come in and play on the wings with Kirby Doc. And they get a great left winger and Lucas Reichel. He's been playing against adults, so I think that this is a very good pickup for them. At number 18, the New Jersey Devils selected uh, Dawson Mercer. Uh, I think that this could be a very good pick for them. Dawson Mercer fell a little bit in this draft, and I'm not really sure why. He had he had 63 points in 44 games, and he also has the leadership capability. He did wear a A, or he is wearing an A this season on his team in the QMJHL. And I think that the forwards that New Jersey picked up are very, are going to be very, very helpful for them coming up. At number 19, the New York Rangers, with their second pick of the draft, selected Braden Schneider from the WHL. Uh, he's a defenseman. It looks like he's more of an offensive defenseman. Uh, I think that this is a very good pickup for them. The Rangers, if anything, uh, have a weakness, I think, on their blue line more so than their forward group, especially now with Lafreniere. But I think that the Rangers are going to be a pretty well-rounded team coming out of this, um, especially if Braden Schneider can, if they struck gold with him and he starts playing immediately, um, it's going to be very good for the Rangers, and they could be a very well-rounded team and definitely a contender even next year. And at number 20, the New Jersey's sol- Devils selected Shakir Mukamadoulin. Um, I didn't have him on my draft sheet, so I had to go do a bunch of research, and I was, had no idea who he even was. But you know, he has been playing a lot in the actual KHL. He has forty-one games of experience in the KHL, but you know, seven points. He is a defenseman, so you know that kind of makes up for it. Um, I don't really know if he's more of a stay-at-home defenseman or an offensive defenseman. If he can defend, the Devils got a good pick. If he can defend in any capacity in his own zone, the Devils got a great pick. Uh, especially if he can come in next year and make an impact on that blue line, that will really help them. And, uh, while they do have, especially if Holtz comes in this year and, If Dawson Mercer can come in at some point to play a few games this year, the Devils are going to have a really good offense coming soon. It's just that their defense is terrible, and they really, really need this defenseman to hit. All right, and on to this morning's news. As of I'm recording this, it is 9.40 uh, Pacific time. So uh, if anything has happened while I've been recording this, I'll do it in the next video. Uh, So, early this morning, the Jets re-signed Dylan DeMello. I think that this is a very good uh, thing for them. Their blue line was destroyed at the beginning or the end of last season. So, uh, keeping a guy like Dylan DeMello is very good for them. And hopefully, they can pick up a defenseman in free agency that will help them defend more on their blue line. And they can be back to playoff contention next season. Uh, Next up, uh, Matt Murray. Uh, was traded to the Ottawa Senators for the 52nd overall pick and prospect uh, left winger Jonathan Gruden. Uh, I think this is an interesting pick. It helps out both teams. Uh, It gives the Senators a starting goaltender, as long as Matt Murray can be the starting goaltender. Um, And then Pittsburgh gets a pick that could be a really great player, especially with how deep this draft is. 
and they get a prospect, and their prospect pool is as shallow as a puddle. So uh, it really helps. This I think this is a good trade for both teams, although I still think that they could have gotten more for Matt Murray, but I do know that goalies don't usually command the same prices that we put on them. Uh, and next uh, on news, uh, Nick Bonino, a second and a third, were traded to the Minnesota Wilds for uh, Luke Kunin and a fourth round pick. So uh, this is a very interesting trade. Uh, I think this does help Minnesota offensively. Uh, Nick Bonino's a great middle six guy. And they also get a second and a third round pick this year. Um, I don't know how good this is for Nashville. Uh, I've heard a lot of stuff from Minnesota fans about how Luke Kunin hasn't really developed the way that they wanted him to, but he might need the change of scenery to help him out more. Kind of like Kevin Fiala, where in Nashville he wasn't great, but then he goes to Minnesota and he starts putting up a bunch of points. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this trade works out for both teams. I think this helps uh, Minnesota out more, especially with a second and a third. But uh, if Luke Kunin can be the player that he was drafted to be in Nashville, then I think Nashville could win this trade. And lastly, uh, Nashville has bought is has put uh, Kyle Turris and Steven Santani on unconditional waivers for the purpose of buying them out. Um, I barely even I barely even heard of Steven Santini, but I do know that Kyle Turris buying him out. That's going to be a long time they're paying for Kyle Turris. I think he's got four years, or he had four years left on his contract. Although, uh, moving Benino's contract uh, and buying out these two players, uh, I think Nashville could try to make some noise in free agency on Friday. So, I think it's going to be very interesting what Nashville does and if they can show that the moves that they've made and how quickly they are they going to get back into contention because this year they lost to the Coyotes in the playing round and that the Coyotes were dominated in every game by the Colorado Avalanche. I know they took a game, but it was more Darcy Kemper being a wall than the Coyotes actually playing well. So yeah, can Nashville become a contender again with these few moves? Or are they just going to slow down the process of their window closing slightly? So, yeah, that's all I have to say for this morning. In a couple of hours, I'm going to try to have the third part of the draft review come up. And I'll be talking about any other news that happened today. Uh, who knows? Maybe Freddie Anderson gets traded today. Uh, there's huge news for poten huge potential for news coming up this week. So I will talk to you in the next video.